You don't know how you met me, you don't know why You got a hand turn around and say goodbye Sam, I've got to say there's big rumours going around that you're the teacher's pet mate yeah. What's what's his dad? I'm at AMT in Leeds and I'm going to be taking a special little road trip up the Thorpe Arch, a place that I know very, very well. We're going to get three Leeds United players in the car. We're going to talk about their careers, their time at Leeds United and their teammates. And they get the pleasure of having me as their chauffeur for the day. So let's go. Is that late? We're late. I like it, son. <laughs> <laughs> so, lads, good to have you on board. Great to be here. I've got, um, how come you've been given the designated shotgun? Yeah, that was the oldest. The tallest. <laughs> the tallest. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think it's, I'm not the oldest, so I think it's the tallest. Nothing to do with the armband? No, no, no. Yeah. So while we're in the car, obviously, car school, what's the music that you, what you're into, Ethan? Um, what's your go-to? A little bit RB, I'll be honest. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Some slow, on the slower vibe, I think. Sam, you'll not be an RB, man. Nah, a bit of country, I think. Are you a country man? Are you not? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Hey, you man, man, you're country, I'm going to pull out and get out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't. To be fair, P Pat's been banging on about Luke Coombe. Luke Coombe? <laughs> what about you? I think it's Coombe. Coombs. What's his name? So you got louder. Dan, are you a rapper? Um, no, I don't mind a bit of everything, really. Cover all bases. What? Covering R&B, is that more like just what you hear on the radio? Yeah. Life in Capital. <laughs> do what you want. But you never listen to radio, do you like? No, I like Heart, to be fair. And Smooth, Smooth FN. Yeah, Smooth. Smooth's the best, I think. And some you've had a few clubs in your time. Yeah. You, do you do the initiations where you have a sing song? Um, sort of depends on the club ground, I think. A lot of places still do it, but some it's kind of died out a bit. Uh, so yeah, we, we don't do it, uh, or we've not done it this season. What would be, what's your go-to if you had to stand up in front of the lads? What's your go-to song and what's your go-to one in the car? Country. You <laughs> <laughs> can't even think of it. <laughs> I know. Really put, name one country song. Teske Brothers, uh, decent. Excellent. Uh, karaoke song. Uh, Why was Jump Up, Get get Up, uh, House of Pain? Jump Up and Get Around. That's a good one. Yeah, good one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You have to see it. No. I serve your side, jump back in your girl steps up, I'm swapping it. Word to your mom, I keep my drop bombs, I got more rams, just cops, red sums. Get out of the jump around. Wow. That should go too. That was impressive, but right. can't say I've got that easy. Uh, I think I did Uncle Cracker. Follow me, yeah. yeah. You don't know how you met me, you don't know why. You got a hand turn around and say goodbye. Go on, John, lads. My stage. I said. These he, enjoy singing, that'll be on the There's a lot of songs I do like, but I just can't remember the lyrics. Um, that's my go to because you say one not. You've got that you've got that personality though, haven't you? I yeah, I don't mind it. Like some people hate it. You don't have like the loudest people ever and they go to sing and they just crumble. So keeping on the music theme, chance at the grounds of uh, what what are the fans? Uh, have you got any uh, 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 Do 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 basic yellow white and blue up and do 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 <laughs> What's the next bit? I like it. I do it. I can't say. Yes, you can. They try to make me sing my own song. <laughs> Have you got one, Sam? I don't think so. Sam by Run. Sam. Nice. Did you watch yours? I have one. No? You nah, did. Obviously, not done well enough to get one. What's the best one at the um, at the club? Who's got the best one? Oh, the best one is the juniors. purple one, right? Yeah, Juniors is good. I don't actually know the lyrics to it. Uh, actually, that is the. We were trying to guess it, Plymouth away, but I don't actually know the lyrics. Oh, is that the one that was going around there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. We like it, we like it. It's that one, isn't it? No, oh, that's um, oh, no, that's John. Somerville Stroke of Pirro. That one's good. Yeah, that, that goes well. Yeah. A lot of travelling. What do you, what do you lads do individually to keep yourselves entertained? Because back in my day, you know, it's just going to sound stupid. Michael Doobie was um, a bit like you, Danny. Looks, he loved getting everybody together and being a bit out there. So we used to have a. On the way back after games was like a, a karaoke session at the front of the bus and the microphone. Karaoke it's every year. Nah, no, that's loud. Wow. So we get that back with ten. And lads all have like scorecards to give each other ten. Oh, why do we not do that? No oh, class. What do you just do? Is it is it headsets and laptops or do you just card schools and reaction? You play cards. Do you have card school? Yeah. Okay. Well, 
it's got a bit thin recently, so there's not many enough players. I actually always tries to get that game going, Benny the uh, imposter. Game. No, no. Imposter. Not like like Wolf. Yeah, it's fine. Like that, but yeah, different. Oh, but on on the phone, the no, oh, no, like so, just playing as if we're playing now. Ah, uh, three right. of you got a certain football player, and then one of you's got someone else, and obviously you got to say one word about the player. Oh, oh like we're just yeah, I'll see you. See you. I'm yeah. a footballer. So about the player, you have to try and guess who's oh, the wrong cool. player. And obviously, I actually do one for TikTok, and he young age. Yeah. So um, he loves trying to get everyone on that. To say it goes down quite well. Has he got a good follow? Sam's like having it off, but Sam gets involved as well. <laughs> 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 Sam loves it. <laughs> Sam loves it. <laughs> Is there designated spots on the on the bus where you sit? Because my first debut. When I was um, at summer, I went to sit in the seat, and the captain told us that I was in the wrong seat. I was in his seat, Kevin, Kevin Ball, and he, he told us to move. Yeah. And then when I went and sat in another seat, he said, "Mate, that's my seat as well." And I'm thinking, oh, so oh, I know. <laughs> I started the whole way in me cups of tea. I think that's the worst when you first come into the team and you've got to find a seat and you have to ask everyone. Or you sit in someone's seat who's been injured, so you've been sat there for like three weeks, and yeah. they come back, they want their seat back. It's like <laughs> if you're a young lad, you've got to move, but then. The boys obviously have you off when you sit up and move saying goodbye and it's <laughs> <laughs> So is that plenty of stitch up from the newbies? No, nah, we were quite friendly. Uh, no, we haven't done that. We got a good table, Sam, haven't we? So yeah. have you got have you got designated spots so yeah, you really yeah. stick to where you are, especially yeah. the runner really, form. Even in the meeting room it's kind of like the same, like without even thinking everyone just can't sit in the same Joe spot. The other day? <laughs> yeah, Joe was an the other day because yeah. obviously I've been out two weeks and I think George had been sitting at the front. Yeah. Usually there's the four seats at the front. I think it's me, Joe, Georgie, and I who else is it? And I, f- I can't remember who else, but there was only three that time and I sat down and Joe was like, move. And I was like, Joe, I'm not moving. Like, <laughs> you're going to try and make me move to the back. He said, like, yeah, it's superstition. I'm like, you're, you're not superstitious. Like, nah, he is. Huh? Joe is. Joe's yeah, the most superstitious guy I go. Who, who's been the uh, the biggest influence on your career? Doesn't have to be a player, it could be family. My dad, to be fair. Yeah. Um, he was the reason why I started football. See, I don't remember him, but being a kid, seeing my dad play football every day, was probably what attracted me towards football anyway. So, and um, ever since then, just if I've had a good game or a bad game, I'd probably go to him for for advice or what what, what happened throughout that game. But so I say him. A great, a great answer. Like I say, my dad had a, had a huge influence on my career as well. He was um, after two rejections from Newcastle, Middlesbrough, and Middlesbrough, making that sum and third time I needed him as my rock and my mentor. Yeah, Sam. Uh, similar, I'd probably say, maybe my brother as well. Uh, I think growing up we were very similar age and he's two years older so I think I was always trying to compete with him and um, probably brought the best out of me growing up and um, yeah, it sort of drove me on to... Did you see he was older or younger than you? Two years older. What was he? Yeah, so I think he, he was always probably the more talented one and um, being the younger brother you always want to compete with, my, with your siblings so yeah, I think... I'd say him. Did he go on to make it as a footballer as well? No, he, um, he'd probably say himself, his attitude let him down, I think. Oh, just stitch your brother up there. But... No, he, he'd, he'd say it himself. You know, he had um, all the talent in the world, but he probably just not as driven. So, um, but no, he definitely helped me along the way. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's mad how many younger brothers and sisters go on to, to do better than the older ones because you've been competing all your life against them. Chasing them. Against... Yeah, chasing them and everything. Day Jeff? Yeah, I think I say my dad too. You know, I always took me everywhere when I was younger. Took away his obviously weekends to to watch me go play football and um, I wouldn't have played for Wales at such a young age because I think at 11, 12 he contacted the, the Welsh FA to basically say, you know, I've obviously got Welsh in me and uh, I went to go and train with North Wales at the time so I, kind of, I was with him since I was kind of like 12 and then we played South Wales then we, you go into like the first international camp so I think it was 14, 15 where I kind of made, I had my first game for Wales in Belgium against Belgium and Switzerland. So, uh, I, yeah, I'd definitely say him because I wouldn't have played for Wales at such a young age and come through the age, you know, I think that had a big impact on my career from playing, um, you know, away from home and playing for Wales at such a young age. So, yeah, I think I'd definitely say him. I think I see it. Father figures, nothing better. I think we were, we're all being very blessed in that situation that have all had an impact on what on my lives and my careers. I've had some crazy roommates in my time. Like I, I was saying, I know you haven't got roommates and things, but in the past, who was being like the the prankster from any of your clubs back in the day or Leeds United? Who was like the, the most painfulest, craziest player? Because 
I've played with a few, and I think the most outrageous was a guy called Jimmy Bullard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is just absolutely loose as a goose. I ended up in a taxi with him after a night out. Did you? <laughs> oh, wait, then, talk about that. It's we made it our first ever Christmas do for Leeds. Um, I don't know why he was there, because he won at Leeds, but he ends up... Well, there was a party on. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, there's just me, Michael Brown, Luke Vine, who was mental as well, and him ended up in a taxi. It's a great taxi, that. Driving around London, it was, yeah, it was funny. He was free. He was through the middle in the taxis here, just giving in stick the whole way home. <laughs> just constant. Yeah, that was the first and only time I've met him, but... Yeah, he just seems so funny. Well, there you go. You've answered the question before. He's the most famous man on your phone. To be fair, I've not heard his number. Did you be fired him? Did you ask him? Good... Nah, nah. Biggest moment in your footballing career to date, mate? What would... What's been your standout so far? Uh, playing in the World Cup with Wales. Yes. Proud moment. Probably one of the few games I've actually been nervous, like, waiting in the tunnel for. Um, the first game, yeah, especially. Definitely felt butterflies. Who was your first game? America. And handle the situation. Did you find that once you got on the field of play, did you just relax into the game and then once the, once the game started? I remember we didn't did have a great first 45. No, we did. So I, got sure we I got dragged down. off at half time. It's not my best episode. I was going to say, is that the <laughs> DJ will come in your next session. It's remind me. So, obviously, we're gone for one uh, eight minutes to be the best. That's obviously. Not yours, but what is your standout moment in your career? Probably scoring my debut for Wales against Slovenia, I think. And I had all my family watching as well in the stand, so I think that's probably... Brilliant. Definitely mine. Especially after everything you were talking about with your family and your dad getting you to, to play for them as well, yeah? Yeah, it was Yeah, it was, yeah, it was brilliant. So did you, did you celebrate with them towards them, or did you just go into a match? Uh, I was in the other corner, but yeah, I just... I don't remember the next 30 seconds, it was just a bit crazy, and then... Yeah, obviously, after it was you know, quite emotional. What's social media like these days for you lads? Because I never had anything like that back in the day, and I, I use it now, obviously, to, to try and get myself, you know, keep myself going um, for life after football, but I switch away from the keyboard. Warriors, what's it like for you lads? You must get absolutely bombarded. And how, how, do you, how, is it, how is it to handle? It's obviously tough because you can have 100 good comments, but one the one bad comment will get to you. Yeah. Um, you just kind of have to come away from it. I, uh, because it's not even good sometimes reading the good comments because you don't want to get yourself too high. You kind of, you really want to stay neutral with it. It's obviously nice reading sometimes, but there'll always be that one bad one. And it's hard, especially if you have the app on your phone, to not just keep scrolling. Yeah. Um, and you kind of have to tell people around you to not show you because obviously they get upset about it and they want to tell you, but then you knowing it's obviously not good. So I, I came away from my Twitter good time ago maybe like four or five years ago did you? I mean, it's probably the yeah, best thing yeah. I did because you've had like a bit of a detox to be fair yeah it really helped never I think back. there's obviously some apps where you don't really read too many comments obviously Twitter's just there like you, yeah. whereas like someone like Instagram's pictures you don't do you know what I mean you have to click to go through the comments so you, that's a big challenge for the next set of players coming through as a younger yeah, generation a big thing to handle if you come through as a, as a young lad and you're doing really well it's how you deal with it when it's, you know, there's always going to be a time where you're not in form and not doing as good and, do you know what I mean, it quickly changes and then, you know what I mean, you see that on social media, it's like having, you know, your mind's not built to, to take that much criticism, so just have to have the right people around you, you know, I mean, a lot of times just maybe just come away from it. Well, like you say, just get rid of it and come away from it. Yeah, I think detox. so, I think it's the best thing to do. So Daniel Farber, yeah, the boss as we call him, Sam, I've got to say, there's big rumours going around that you're the teacher's pet, mate. Yeah, he he you 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 this is the, the second, second time we signed you, yeah? Is it true? Is it true? No, no, dad, what's, what's his, his dad? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> does he get away with more than you, lads, does he? Oh, does he? Yeah, come on, like, give us some examples. He gets his own personal reformer. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But that has Everybody. nothing to do with the, the manager, all that. Like, there's space on the coach that needs, like, for, like, some suitcases yeah. that, like, Sam's reformer takes priority. Um, just little things like that, like, and Daniel makes that specific, like, yeah, you can do that. Sam, do you want to defend yourself? But yeah, that's nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, did he, did he live with them in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> it was been your toughest manager to, to date. Toughest? Yeah, like, you know, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to cross him or you have done in the past and you've thought, I'll not do that again. Ah, uh, it's tough. I had a guy called Peter Reed, so I'm not sure if you lads would have remembered, but mate, you crossed him, you, you were done. Yeah, you. I missed, I missed like three, three matches for a seller by clapping somebody else's goal in the opposition <laughs> team and I saw the manager looking at us and he's going, what are you doing? 
I said, well, that was a, not a bad goal. <laughs> and I, I thought, what have I just done? And I was on That's not like George you would do. Uh, I did get sent out of the change room once. Who was that by? Uh, Carlos Carvajal. I wasn't actually, he wasn't actually that strict. He was a nice guy, he was funny. He always come out with crazy quotes that, um, you know, I went after games and things, but it was, I was a young lad that was in the first in change room, probably didn't deserve to be in there because I wasn't really being the squad. So I was just kind of training with them. I made my debut against Stotts County in the FA Cup. I uh, scored my debut, it was, you know what I mean? It was that absolutely buzzing. We had Tottenham next game at home. Kickoff was at 12. So we had to meet a pre-match at 12 at the stadium. So we go to the stadium, we park there, and then we get a bus to the train ground, which is two minutes away for pre-match. I was getting called at like, I basically woke up, my phone was out of charge. I charged it, it's 9.15, right? Everyone's calling me. Obviously, I'm a young lad, I'm thinking, I'm panicking. They said, basically, um, get yourself here now, we're gonna go over. So meet us at the train ground. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna have to walk in here now. And I'm not I'm not gonna be, you know, I'm, I'm be late, I'm a young lad. Um, I got a call halfway there to say that I'm not in the squad now, which was obviously so tough. Like, it was, it was, you know, silly from me. Uh, when when to see him after the game, apologised. I was going with Wales the next day, so he said, "Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it." Said obviously, uh, I'm really sorry. You know, it will happen again. And I, and I got back, and, I, and my all my stuff had been moved from the first scene change room to the 23s. So obviously, it was like super embarrassing. But you know, I learned a lot from that. Who he said would you love to meet? Who's the who's the idol of the most famous person? And why? That is a good question. Because mine, it's tough one. Yeah, mine is Tiger Woods. Yeah, I'd love to meet him because I love me golf, and I just think it's golf. amazing what he's done. I'd love to just have a game of golf with Tiger, get me get absolutely smashed, and then go in the barn get smashed with him afterwards. <laughs> well, <laughs> you just get Sam Thiessen. A game of golf with Michael Jordan would be nice, wouldn't it? Be good. Yeah, that's a high, that'd be high stakes. Good player as well, by the way, isn't it? Three. He rubs you yeah. to Ben on that. Yeah, he does. Put oh, pressure high. on. Yeah. yeah. So would that be yours? You would like a game of golf for Jordan, yeah? Oh, that'd be good, yeah, I think so. You too? I actually don't know. Oh. Good question there. Eh? Quite like Mike, which are for a round of golf. Be a good one to watch as well. Do you play golf? I try to. You, you play, play golf? golf? A little bit, yeah. Once I've finished football, I'll, I'll take over probably. DJ's lying, DJ's good. No, I'm not. DJ's good. All. You don't even have an handicap. Yeah, but you, yeah, you see you're one of them. You're the, one, you're the type of person that you've got to watch. They turn up to see they don't have a handicap. Smashes it, man. And then you just smash it and you totally do you walk away with the money. DJ's good. They don't let him lie to you. Like, I used to love playing at Elland Road when he had the Legion United kit on. And I remember coming back uh, here as a Carlisle United player and a Sunderland player. And I hated it because I got so much stick, even though they're still remembered. They're never going to give you the satisfaction to say, oh, he was one of our players. Well done. You know, I, I got I got torn to shreds. But, I, you, you know, you respect it. The fan base, what, what, what's it? You've, you've had a lot of fan bases. Where do you put the Leeds, Leeds uh, fit for you see them around the region where we're living? Um, Elland Road. It's, it's definitely up there. Um, one of the best sort of atmospheres that I've, that I've played in. Um, everyone knows, like, march on together when you walk out, it's pretty special. Um, it's quite a job. I think that shows, like, say, Ar even like Archie, Archie sings it as well when he's walking out. So. <laughs> <laughs> so have you not noticed it? Uh, that, you, you still think this is a ball boy? It's <laughs> having a dream. Um, but no, just like little things like that. Um, we, we, we feel it and yeah, it makes me actually say it's pretty special. Well, you, the song you mentioned there, uh, at Christmas we was doing some um, stadium tours for the fans. And me and Tony Drago and a few hours was to come back and do yeah. the stadium tours with the fans. And I don't mind admitting this, probably going to sound really sad, but we're in the tunnel. And you're only there, you're there with like 20 or 30 fans walking down the tunnel into an empty stadium and one of the guys that was doing the two of us played the March on together song. I started crying. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, yeah. Why are you laughing? We, 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 tears rolled down my face. And we're, we're, what's wrong with you? I said, oh, this is just too emotional. So for all the other six tours I had to do, I, I, I didn't go walk down the tunnel. Really? Yeah, I got totally mad. So when you mentioned that there, I still, I still get goosebumps from it. Yeah, you do, you, you do get goosebumps. Well, what I will say to you boys is thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the car journey. Personally, from me, I'm an next player, but obviously you've been a fan, is that the you lads, the run years are on, the team dynamics that you've got, but not only that, better than that, you're all top, top lads. So thank you very much, and I wish you all the best for the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.